What you say, ladies and gents, it is your boy by Cat Sam, and yes, we are back again today for another video. With the North London derby round the corner, I thought I would do a Tottenham and Arsenal combined 11. Yes, it's probably controversial, but whether you enjoy the video or not, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does really help, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's get right into it. We've got to start off then with the goalkeeper. The two choices really are Lloris for Tottenham or Ramsdale. And I think everyone, Tottenham fans as well, will agree with this. Ramsdale has been very, very good this season. And whereas Lloris, I do worry with Lloris as a keeper. I don't think he's very commanding. He seems quite small and he likes to stay on his own. He reminds me very much of David Haye kind of goalkeeper. A goalkeeper who's a very good shot stopper. But it just doesn't look confident. I don't have full trust in him. He's not great with the ball at his feet. We all know that, and Conte quite clearly doesn't want him with the ball at his feet. And not only that, he's not commanding, he doesn't come out for crosses. Little things like that, whereas Ramsdale right now is very, very confident. We've seen in recent weeks, he's been very good. So I think I've got to go straight in with Ramsdale in goal. Now on to right back. So the two choices at right back are Emerson Royale, because I don't think Darty really can be in this discussion. Emerson Royale versus Tommy Asu. Emerson Royale, you know I've said it on the past on this page. I'm struggling to get to grips with him. I, I still don't trust him as a defender. I'm still not fully convinced by him. And I still always remember that game against Crystal Palace when Zaha tore him apart. But yeah, he's looked a lot more assured recently. But I do think it helps that he's playing in the right wing-back system. Because I think if he was a four at the back playing right back, you would see how defensively vulnerable he really is. Whereas Tommy Asu, I think, has been a player who's really excelled in this system. He's playing under Mikel Arteta. Right back who defensively is so solid because obviously he was originally a centre back, converted to a right back, and he looks very good, really assured on the ball, and he's a player who will really fight for the shirt, very committed in every challenge. And I just really like him. I think he's all he needs to do, I think he does need to improve slightly on his attacking game, but defensively he's very sound and attacking wise, he's good. I'm just asking for that little bit extra. So I think straight away, right back has got to be Tommy Asu. Now, we've got to do the two centre-backs. So, I think the two centre-back pairings, choices, realistically, the Tottenham pair are Sanchez and Eric Dyer, and then the Arsenal pair are Gabriel and Ben White. First of all, I want to discuss Ben White and Davison Sanchez. Davison Sanchez, we all know, is a calamity. He's constantly making errors lead to goals. He makes me very nervous. If I was a Tottenham fan, I would be nervous when he's on the pitch. He's very unorthodox. He can sometimes have great games, but he's just not consistent enough. Eric Dyer has been... Amazing in this Conte system. I really, really do like him. Yes, he's made a couple of errors when he's passing out from the back, but you can see without him, Tottenham look very vulnerable. A player who surprised me the fact that he's the man that Conte chooses and the one that he said we are building the defence around him. But hey ho, it is working. Tottenham in the league have been very, very good recently. But I still don't think they're on the level and the partnership of Gabriel and Ben White. Gabriel, I really do like. Yes, he's slightly unorthodox and he does have moments, but overall, I think he's a lot more assured and better, realistically, than Eric Dyer and Davidson Sanchez. And Ben White, don't get me started on him, a player who I spoke highly of about a year ago. I said when the announcement was being made, I put it out there and said, he is a great signing, will be one of the best centre-backs in the league, and I think he's lived up to that. On the ball, he's great. His distribution is very good. But it's what he does when he drives with the ball, the carries. He takes players out of position. Dr but literally, when he dra drags the ball forward, he goes with the ball. He brings players out of position, which then creates space for more of the, the creative players. Players like Odegaard, but we'll get onto them in a bit. So I think definitely the two centre-backs have got to be, I don't think it's a discussion, Gabriel and Ben White. Now onto left-back, the two choices realistically are Regulon and Tierney. And it's really surprised me, actually, Regulon. I thought Regulon would be a starter in this side. And in recently, especially in the League Cup semi-final, they saw Matt Doherty playing at left-back. Obviously, Conte doesn't trust him. I don't trust him either. A player who I really like going forward, but again, defensively, he's very, he leaves Tottenham very vulnerable. And I don't know what it is. He's just extremely inconsistent. He has moments where I think he's great. And then the next week, he just slaps him back in the face. Whereas Kieran Tierney, a player, yes, who has been had injury problems, but he's starting to get a bit of a run going, and he looks very good. He's a great player. You know what you're going to get with him. Defensively sound. He's got an engine. He's constantly up and down. Whips in an absolutely dangerous ball with that one of a left foot. And he's just a great player overall. Really, really good player. So, I can't believe it. We've got a complete Arsenal back four. That's, that surprises me. That genuinely surprises me. But now onto the midfield. We're going to play a 4-3-3. A 4-3-3, by the way. Sorry, I didn't clarify that earlier. We're going to start off with the holding midfielder. So I'm going to decide between Shaka and Hoiberg. And Shaka, this is not even recently. 
I just struggle to get behind him. A player who does it for his national side, but for some reason when he puts that Arsenal shirt on, it just turns to calamity. He, he has moments where we go for a few games and then the old Shaka comes back, as we saw against Liverpool last night. Just not good enough. Makes mistakes. He can't be a player. If they're going to build a midfield, you can't rely on him. Too many red cards, too many errors, loses his head. And he's been lucky in recent weeks not to get red cards with some of the challenges he flies in. He's just overly committed. Whereas Hoiberg, I think, gets a lot of stick for some reason. I don't understand why. A player I really like going forward. He's great on the ball. And I think he was a player that I think has been the only player realistically from Tottenham, other than a player we'll discuss in a bit, where he can really hold his head up high and say, do you know what? I fought for the badge even under Nuno. A player who... Him and Oli Skip have created a little bit of a partnership, but Hoiberg has got that touch of class. He always wins the ball back. His distribution's great. But that's what I love. The way he wins the ball back, he's not on Kante's level, but I think he's definitely one of the best ball-winning centre midfielders. I, I do really mean that. And he's committed in every challenge, so I really like him. So I think I'm going to go as the first centre mid, Hoiberg. Sorry, the first holding midfielder is Hoiberg. Now onto the two centre midfielders. This is now where it gets interesting. The choices are Oliver Skip or Partey, or Undombele, or Odegaard. Undombele is a player who is, again, unreliable and inconsistent, and that seems to be a running, recurring and running theme when I'm discussing this Tottenham side, which is it's crazy to think it. It's, it's a shame, because Undombele has moments where I think this guy could be a world beater, but he seems to have attitude problems. We saw it against Morecambe when he walked off. It's just not good enough, and I can't see him realistically finding a way to get back into this system, because if you upset Antonio Conte like that, we've seen it in recent, in recent times and in the past, you're gone. You're like you're done. So I don't think Undombele. So I'm going to pick Odegaard over Undombele, and then Oliver Skip is a player who I've really enjoyed watching this season. I really liked him when he was at Norwich last season in the Championship, but I just don't think he's there yet. He's improving week in week out, but I still don't think he's at that level where he could be considered one of the better centre midfielders. So I think I'm going to have to go Thomas Party, a player that disappointed me. I had such high hopes, but he's been pretty average, I'd say. Pretty average, but I still think that average level is better than Oliver Skips. You know what you're going to get with him, but hopefully over time he may improve. Currently our AFCON. So now let's move to the front three. The reason why you've all clicked on this video. So let's start off right winger. So we're going to discuss between Lucas Mora and Bakayo Saka. It's got to be Bakayo Saka. Bakayo Saka has been absolutely class this season. A player I love, and I keep forgetting how young he is. He's 20 years old. You'd think this guy's about 35 with the experience and calm, and the fact that he just he doesn't, pressure doesn't get to him. We saw it last night against Liverpool. I thought he was, one of, he was absolutely brilliant, and he's been brilliant throughout the season. We just need to remember how young this kid is. Lucas Moura, don't get me wrong, I think he's been great this season in moments, but again, this is a moment player, bit part player, inconsistent and I said it's a theme it really is but it's got to be Bakayo Saka now to the left winger it's either Martinelli or Huming Son Huming Son is currently injured Martinelli has been very very good recently he's on a great run got back into that side after some injury problems but Martinelli seems to be backed by Arteta really nice when he cuts in on that right foot from that left hand side and has been bagging quite a few goals been looking very very lethal and part of that Arsenal system that he's doing so well but I still think I've got to go for Huming Son. Huming Son is one of the best finishers in the Premier League. I absolutely love him. A dynamite of a winger. The, the pace and the sheer, the way he's so direct, I absolutely love him. And he's just a great player, isn't he? He's one of those players, again, as I said with Hoiberg, a player who's been reliable this season. He hasn't been inconsistent. One of those players that you knew would fight for that shirt. Somebody I really like. A really, really good player who I think is underrated. I still say it. I still think he's underrated. So it's got to be Huming Son. And now to the striker, it has got to be Kane or Lacazette. And I think even though Kane hasn't had a great season, I think we all know it's got to be Kane, realistically. Lacazette is a good player, holds the ball up well. Recently, he's been in good form. But I think Kane, yes, he's dipped this season. But we all know the ability this guy has. We can all see it. And he's slowly coming back to that level under Antonio Conte. You can see he's got a smile back on his face. He's driving with the ball. He's not coming too deep. A player we all know can perform. A very, very good player. A player that I've always loved. And it's mental to think our season, the golden boot and the most assists. And we're discussing whether this guy is good enough. Everyone has bad times. This guy, he's just going through a bad patch. He will come back, i tell you that now. He's a great player. So that is it, guys. That is my Arsenal and Tottenham combined 11. We've got Ramsdale Allen goal, Tommy Asu, Ben White, Gabriel and Kieran Tierney. All Arsenal five there. Hoiberg in holding midfielder. Then Odegaard and Thomas Partey in centre midfielders. Then a front three. 
of Huming Son, Harry Kane and Bakayo Saka. Let me know, guys, if you disagree or agree with my opinions. Hopefully we all agree. Hopefully we all get along. And smash that like button and subscribe, but there will be loads more content coming your way. Don't you worry about that. But book it out, Sam, over and out. Thank you. Goodbye.